So I'd like to welcome you to our op virtual open house. My name is Wayne Walpole. I'm the coordinator of the Horticultural uh, Technician Program. And uh, I've been teaching here in the program for um, over 20 years. My background is in public gardening and in uh, landscaping. And it's been my privilege to teach here for many years. Um, Derek, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, yeah, I'm Derek Schultz. I'm the coordinator for the Greenhouse Technician Program. And uh, I love greenhouses. That's my passion, as everyone knows. And uh, I look forward to seeing any students that are interested in greenhouse production. My background is as a commercial operator of my own business for 15 years, and then been teaching for quite a few years here now. So look forward to letting you in on whatever's in my head to help you succeed in that career. Okay, Carrie. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Carrie Zerman. I'm the coordinator for the landscape technician program here at the college. Um, my background is in mostly in landscape design and then also in design build. So design and then constructing the design once it, it has been kind of fully planned out. Um, yeah, and we're just, what I would say is all three of us are kind of a, a great big family um, as far as the programs go. And uh, it's, we have a lot of fun um, carrying out the programs together. Thank you. Um, we're the coordinators, but we have actually a full-time staff devoted to various uh, devoted to various aspects of horticulture of uh, eight, um, seven or eight, depending on how you look at it, full-time staff tied in with our program. That's the largest amount of full-time staff for any horticulture program in the province of Ontario. So we have us as coordinators, but we have a very large and very, very well-educated, well-experienced staff. So um, if you come to our programs, you get a lot of people, they've got a background in the industry, but right now this is all they do is focus on Niagara College and their program at Niagara College and making it the best program it could be and helping you to succeed. Now, if you've had a chance to look at some of the course outlines, the programs of instruction online, you realize that the first year, the courses are all in common. So the courses in the fall semester and your first winter semester, both horticulture students, landscape students, greenhouse students, it's all foundational courses. So we all are in them together, which builds a nice spirit and also gives everybody a good solid for foundation for whatever aspect of horticulture they'd like to go into in their second year. You have some flexibility. Halfway through that first year, if you came in thinking you wanted to be um, a landscape designer and you started to grow in a greenhouse and you thought, I've never had so much fun in my life as working in a greenhouse, you can switch from landscape to greenhouse or from any one of the programs to another. So you've got that flexibility in your first year. Um, any other observations about the program before we open it up to um, some questions that might be out there? Derek or Carrie, anything you'd like to add? Did you want me to share the PowerPoint on my screen for everyone to see? That would be great. I wasn't sure where that we were at with that. You can talk to it, Wayne, and narrate it while, while okay. I go through it, okay? That's perfect. One thing maybe before we start that, uh, Laura, are you still on the call? Yes, I am. Would you like a chance to kind of introduce yourself and... Sure. So okay. hi, everybody. Yep. Hi, everybody. My name is Laura Thakla and I work for the international department. So I'm the uh, international student advisor for um, this school. Um, and so my role uh, is to help uh, the international students with their academic and immigration um, needs. And I do have a counterpart for Canadian students. Um, her name is Jill English, and she is the academic advisor for Canadian students. So we work very closely with your faculty um, to help uh, support students and guide them in the direction towards graduation. So thank you for being here, everybody. Come study with us. There's some of the students who were with us just a few years ago. You will find that we have a lot of fun. There's a lot of work to be done. And academically, a lot of our courses are very challenging. This is not just, how do I put it? We play, but we play with intent and with meaning and with purpose. I'll put it that way. We have fun, 
but we're also learning a lot and we expect you to do a lot of work, both physical work on campus as well as academic work. There's a potential for a one-year certificate. So those foundational courses of the first year, you can walk away at that first year, say, okay, I think that's enough schooling for me. And you have a one-year certificate, the landscape horticulture techniques. But if you really want to focus on one of the other aspects, the greenhouse, horticulture, or landscape, then you can go to the second year. And then when you complete that successfully, you have an undergraduate diploma. There's a look at our beautiful campus. Um, you can see lots of, you can see some of the vegetable garden, some of the landscaping. We like to refer to our campus as an outdoor living lab. You will be spending a lot of your time outside doing things on our campus. Hundred and twenty-five acres, as it says here, an outdoor living lab, the largest training greenhouse in Ontario. We are constantly updating and renovating our landscape, so we always have new landscape design and build projects on the go. And we are currently, right now as we speak, we are having a new horticulture yard being built. So our facilities, both for our um, equipment and for growing in poly houses, as well as having a uh, in the ground tree nursery, all these things are on the go and will be within a year completely um, developed and ready for you. It was mentioned earlier, we're like a family, and although that sounds like a bit of a cliche, it's true. We're all happy to be here. We all get along really well. Some of us knew each other professionally before. Some of our teachers were 20 years ago or so, they were students. They did well in the industry and they wanted to come back and teach and share all the knowledge that they have. So you can see, here's our staff. We love to be here, we get along, and you will find that they are happy to share their knowledge with you in the classroom, but also in emails and texts, any way we can help you meet your goals, we would like to be able to. Is, can we all hear the audio or no? I think it's kind of slow and glitchy. Oh, is it um, really? Yeah, that's okay. So this is uh, Jesse Savage. He's one of our graduates from a few years back. Um, Jesse also taught with us, uh, mainly taught design um, for us throughout the program. Um, so this is a video of his testimony, basically saying kind of where his journey was. Jesse traveled a lot. He's uh, been out in the landscape industry kind of across Canada and across the states um, and basically was advocating for the whole horticulture industry to kind of give you an example of um, where you can go. Basically saying the skill set you have rather in greenhouse horticulture or landscape, you can then take it pretty much anywhere you want in the world and apply it. Um, and it, so it creates a, a large industry for you to um, enter into upon graduation. And on the side, there are some different projects that he's been able to work on uh, as far as design and build. It is really true. You have lots of transferable skills and the need for trained horticulturalists is huge around the world right now. And uh, we also sometimes suggest for some of our graduates internships there's potential for internships in places like Longwood Gardens in the United States or England or in France. If you're interested in going a bit far afield, there's lots of keen opportunities now more than ever in our industries. So here's the full term, the um, part of the foundational courses, such as deciduous trees and shrubs, what practices, getting practical hands-on experience, getting a little experience with designing, and drawing, getting a sense of how plants grow, in Plant Science One, we discuss the physiology of plants, and it's not just for academic interest. Everything you discuss in Plant Science One and Two ties into how to successfully grow plants, either in a greenhouse or out in the landscape. A winter term of the first year continues this. You're looking at various different um, evergreen ornamentals. You start to understand insects, so it's not just the plants and how they grow, but then what is the interaction of the plants? with um, insects, fungi, horticultural entomology focuses on the interaction of plants and insects, both in the greenhouse and out in the landscape. You will further hone your landscape design skills. You will become experienced at how do I manage if an insect or a disease or a weed is a pest for a particular crop, what's the best way to manage that? And you'll notice in courses like this, the use of the synthetic pesticides, which so many people are not very fond of, 
that's the last thing. There's so many things we can do to manage pest problems before we have to quote unquote spray them with a pesticide. You'll learn all the tools in the toolkit of how to manage um, good plant health and help them grow successfully. So let's take a look. Here's some of our classes occurring in the greenhouse or building landscapes out in on the campus grounds. Lots of interesting opportunities. One year certificate, as we've mentioned, um, you can graduate or now if you're starting in September, you have an opportunity to do a summer co-op. So you have classes in the fall, classes in the winter, and then starting in April, April, May, June, and July, you will be on a work co-op where you're working for an industry that's related to the career you're wanting to pursue. But also we have a co-op department evaluating that with you. So it's not just working for someone, but you're learning and gaining valuable experience as you um, participate in your co-op. If you want to start in January, and there's lots of openings still for January starts, that does not have the co-op because in the um, your first term is in the winter, and then your second term is actually in the spring and summer, which is also makes for a very interesting semester because there's many more opportunities for you to be going outside in your classes because the classes are delivered in the spring and the summer. Lots of student employment opportunities on campus. We hire a large amount of students to work both in the greenhouse and on the grounds throughout the year. So if you need some employment opportunities and you're thinking about a job before you think to work at a fast food establishment or something else that has no relationship to what your career will be, talk to the staff in our greenhouse and see what potential is available to work on the grounds. Lots of learning opportunities. Second year greenhouse technician program. This is the program that Derek coordinates. And as Derek will tell you, if you get bit by the greenhouse bug, it becomes not just a way to make a living, it becomes a passion. It becomes fun. It's If you enjoy what you're doing, it's hardly work in the classic sense of the word work. And that's one of the great things about greenhouse. You're in there, you enjoy it. It becomes a, a wonderful career. And the potential and the opportunities all over the world. Yeah, I guess I should talk about it a little bit. The uh, yeah, you, yeah, please, please do. I don't know what slides next, but <laughs> that's okay. We'll make it up as we go. The along. Uh, greenhouse industry, uh, a lot like all uh, you know, landscape, port, and greenhouse are all uh, in need of skilled people. So there's definitely demand for graduates. Um, it's the vegetable sector for greenhouses is the biggest employer nowadays. It changes, it ebbs and flows as the seasons and uh, economic climates change. But potted plants have actually really surged too now with COVID. A lot of people are buying potted plants again. So there's, there's demand there too. But I see a lot of my students end up in uh, vegetable food producing greenhouses for the most part. Um, you can definitely make a very good wage. It's, a, it's an actual career where you can make a, a real living enough to, you know, buy a house and, and, and settle down, no problem. Um, I think a lot of students that, uh, almost all the students I know of that have gotten jobs in greenhouses have stayed in the industry. Very few actually end up leaving. So that must mean that it's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyways, that's, I don't know if there's anything else I can leave for questions. Well, I guess we'll maybe towards the after the presentation we have a question. Yeah, so there's there's just a look at some of our courses. Um, we talk about fertilizers, we talk about greenhouse environment, we talk about strategies for uh, creating what we call active plants so that they're growing at peak productivity and how to prevent disease through managing climate and nutrition, not just fungicides and stuff like that. Um, in the winter, it's kind of the same sort of thing. We get into some more of the equipment side of things and computer controls, uh, greenhouses are very sophisticated. And uh, it's a lot like you getting into a complicated machine, like an airplane. There's a lot of dials and switches and it's your job to know how to use them all. Uh, greenhouses are, are very complex now. It's not like the old days where there was a thermostat and a fan and you hope that you had a good climate. It, it's, it's much more sophisticated. Um, most vegetable farms invest about $20 million to build a facility. So there's a lot of money that goes into it, but they make good money. So, you know, you're think of it as 
almost more like an industrial farming uh, perspective, I suppose, but very environmentally conscious and, and cost conscious production and yield conscious. Um, but it's a very re rewarding career. You know, uh, a typical grower's job starts in the office in the morning, checking computer graphs. Then they head out into the greenhouse and they might uh, get some labor set up with jobs that need to be done. Then they're going to walk the crop and scout for problems and check their irrigation. And then they're going to come back to the computer, check again, and then do one more round. And then there's days over. And if you believe it or not, it, your day is already eight at eight hours there. Uh, it, that's pretty much how it looks. Um, I should mention that we, we will do, we're hoping to do tours again in the winter. Uh, COVID had kept us out of greenhouses, but there's some hope that we might be able to do some tours uh, in the winter. I think for sure a year from now, that's gotta be back to normal. Uh, <laughs> it's gotta be, or we're gonna lose our minds. But uh, the, the other thing I wanted to mention is that the cannabis program, which does have a lot of uh, interest, uh, both the greenhouse and hort programs can feed into that. Um, I think that generally speaking, like a greenhouse background would probably be your best bet, but you know, uh, definitely Hort grads can also feed into the cannabis program. It's a fairly new thing, but uh, just thought I'd mention that. And I think, I think I'm done. All right. All right, so here's my area of specialty, the second year horticulture technician. Next slide, please. There we go, that's good, oh, full term. So if you're in the second year of the horticulture technician program, it's learning how to grow herbaceous perennials, woody plants, both in production facilities and outside in the landscape, and how to manage their successful growth. Also, we take a look at trees in the landscape. So we take a look at sustainable urban or rural culture, how do trees grow? How should we plant trees? How do we prune trees? huge need in the agriculture industry right now um, for trained individuals who understand all the aspects of our culture. You also get to take a course in plant pathology, which is focusing on all the fungal, um, the fungi that may be causing issues for your plants. You also get a little bit of greenhouse as well. So you will get some <clears throat> me, exposure into greenhouse production as well and nursery production how to propagate woody plants, how to propagate herbaceous perennials in a cost-effective manner. Another huge part of the horticulture industry is turf. Um, you can spend your whole life in a career managing turf, either on a golf course or for home landscapes, and huge need people are obsessed with their lawns for all kinds of reasons. And our turf course and our weed identification course ties into growing turf successfully and then how to manage the weeds that may be problems. Next slide, please. In the winter term, we focus on some other types of crops. We have um, a course on tree fruit production, which focuses on tree fruits and berry production, both outside in orchards, but also in poly houses, what we call high tunnel growing. We have an advanced arboriculture course. If you like to climb trees and you like the idea of chainsaws, and you want to go up in a tree with a chainsaw, in this course, you get to do it. It's a, everybody enjoys it. It's a fun, fun course. Um, we also have the sustainable food production course, which is all about organic vegetable production. So all the principles of organic production, particularly towards vegetables and particularly towards poly houses, may or may not be heated. So you'll be growing successfully crops, particularly in February, March, and April because of the warmth of the sun on the polyhouses. It's, students find it very, very interesting. You may have all this knowledge. If you don't have a background in business, it's not gonna help. So there's also a course in business, to put a practical spin on all that you've learned. We, we have a good time. We have a lot of fun here. You can see some field trips. We went um, to the Toronto Botanical Garden. We were working on the grounds, uh, putting some mulch to help encourage a healthy root system for the roots of the white pine. Um, that's me a few years ago with some students at some rooftop gardens in Toronto where they're growing vegetables. Lots of practical, hands-on components to all of these courses. Next slide, please. 
Okay, Carrie, over to you. Hi everyone. Um, so this is all about kind of uh, my area. So the landscape technician program, um, it is very much design build. So we're looking at not necessarily maintaining the landscape, there's an aspect of it, um, but we're looking at constructing new, right? So uh, it is a combination between being in a design studio and learning software and learning how to be functional and aesthetically pleasing throughout um, landscape design, and then taking that design and being able to lay it out on the landscape and construct all the components of it. Um, so I think we can go to the next slide. I think we can probably pass this one. Um, the, well, hold on, we don't play the video because I think it'll stop, that's fine. Um, we are a very project-based uh, program, which means that we, we build a lot. So uh, what happens is we'll end up designing something in the, in the studio, um, we'll design certain projects and what it looks like, and then we'll then take that design and put it into our construction class and then build those projects out. Um, so we got a really great um, idea and understanding of how the design and installation process happens without in the industry. Um, and because of our design studio on campus and then our horticultural lab um, out around our campus, we have the opportunity to do that. So if you look kind of like at the courses that are outlined here, um, there'll be some um, crossover between the horticulture program. So if you look at our turf and our weeds management um, and pathology, um, those are some core courses that the landscape program and the court program share. Um, and then the specific courses for us as the landscape program in the semester would be our landscape design and details um, and our landscape construction installation. Uh, so in the landscape design and details, we are already have learned uh, software in first year. So we're able to draft online already. Um, and we can then focus in on just creating really good design. Um, and I can't, can't really emphasize that enough. A lot of, a lot of um, different programs and stuff will focus in on just teaching you how to draft and the components. Um, and we really try to focus on solid design and designing with plants and designing solid layouts. Um, we also have an opportunity to uh, be involved with a, a design competition that's province-wide called Come Alive Outside. Um, and we've done very, very, very well in the past few years with that. Um, in our construction class, uh, this semester really is all about uh, grading, uh, learning surveying and uh, stonework. So whether if it's uh, precast landscape pavers or retaining walls or natural stone, um, it's very much, that's kind of what we're, we're learning that semester as well as larger equipment training. So you actually get to go on the mini X and the skid steer, have some fun, it's safe. Um, and we, we tailor that to your experience and your comfortability on the machinery. We can go to the next one. So our winter program, um, again, there's some crossover courses between HORT and landscape. So you'll have architectural green spaces, sustainable landscape management, um, some kind of key courses that can start to kind of get the wheels training as far as creativity and where you can um, dive into a, a narrow stream in the industry. Uh, so I think it's always good to have a broad aspect in that way. And then our core courses are going to be landscape cost and estimating. So this is how you take a design and cost it. Um, and then so you can be efficient and profitable uh, when you go to build it in the landscape. Uh, and then same thing with um, kind of continuing on with the, cost, the construction um, courses and focusing more on wood construction, landscape lighting, water features, uh, and irrigation installation throughout that course. And advanced landscape design, we then take it into color rendering software and 3D rendering. Um, so you have a good basis of all of your software as well as residential design and commercial design. I think, um, the one big thing I would like to reiterate about the landscape program is that we're the smaller of the three programs and we operate very much 
like a family. <laughs> Um, and especially the interaction between design and construction, it's like a, it's a seamless kind of move throughout the semester. You'll feel like one course just kind of rolls into the next. And um, yeah, yeah, we have a good time. So just some, uh, some photos of the landscape program, uh, mainly projects that we have installed. So in the past, it's rather been um, open house on campus. So we, <laughs> We take over the greenhouse a little bit. Um, Derek's always really happy about that. Uh, another one has been going up and connecting with Canada Blooms and helping them install uh, part of the, the showcase that happens there. Um, LO will go to Landscape Ontario Congress in Toronto uh, in January and build a display at that point. And so again, we get to design and build and be hands-on. We have a good time. Um, the middle photo is us doing at heights training because uh, we get our at heights training um, to be able to go up on the green roofs at the campus so we can maintain them. And then um, uh, a come alive outside kind of success photo there. So yeah. So this is kind of us in a nutshell, and um, it's fast, it's busy, but uh, it's in, it's always interesting. All right. So you successfully completed two years at Niagara College as a greenhouse technician, horticulture technician, landscape technician. If you were focusing on greenhouse, you may be interested in uh, the one-year grad certificate in commercial cannabis. We also have a very interesting course in commercial beekeeping, which a lot of our horticulture students have gone on to for another year of that as well. Another pathway, if you're interested in um, getting a Bachelor of Applied Science, so if you want a BS in horticulture, one of the most um, cost-effective ways to get it and one of the most practical ways is through Olds College, which is in Alberta, but actually involves not that many months in the program in Alberta. A lot of it is distance education. And of the two years with old college, one year is a very, so we say sophisticated, detailed um, work placement, um, which you focus on a career path that you're interested in. You look for an aspect of that career. And with your consultants at old college, you participate in that for a year, but based on projects where you'll be learning about that career in that industry pathway you know, in detail. So it's a nice opportunity if you would like to have a um, Bachelor of Science degree. Next slide, please. We'd love to have you join the program. It's, if you're interested, if it plants and horticulture, and landscape design build and greenhouse, I mean, we, we, we're, we're very proud of our program. I'll put it that we are very proud of our program and all of our instructors and of our alumni who are successfully working all over Ontario and all over the world. This, we often culminate at the end of the second year, we do a bus trip um, and to spend all day in Toronto with the landscape and horticulture students. This is at the Evergreen Brickworks in Toronto, beautiful iron map of the different waterway systems that surround Toronto. And that's all of our happy graduates from just a few years ago. So I hope you enjoyed the presentation. And now we'd like to open it up uh, to questions you may have about the program. Just to add, you also have questions in the Q&A tab. There's two questions. Yeah, I'm just looking at them now. So someone's asking uh, what program manages the Cannabunker. So the cannabis program is separate. It's a post-grad certificate. So you would have to do like your two-year uh, greenhouse technician uh, or hort and then apply to the canvas program. And the first one I've already experienced in fundamentals, uh, there is what's something called PLAR, PLAR. If you have a lot of real world, world experience, you need to uh, contact the registrar's office who then will get in touch with the dean and try to see what courses you may not have to repeat to give you some credit for your, your experience. I hope that answers anonymous attendee, whoever you are. I don't see any other questions. If you have any other questions, now the time to just pop them in. We'll be glad to answer them for you.
So one thing I think may probably we probably should mention is that uh, next semester, so starting in the winter semester, we will be back um, in classrooms more uh, on campus. So um, one thing for the three programs is that we have been operating um, face to face for a large majority of that, um, as we've been able to kind of teach outside and Derek's had to go a lot uh, through a lot of stuff with the, the teaching greenhouse and to ensure that students can be actually in there working throughout the process as a lab. Um, so we've been very committed to continuing on with the hands on. So I think that's just a, a good point to kind of and next winter semester or this winter semester should be even better than that. I'm really excited. I get to go back to the design studio. <laughs> I'm also looking and we're getting we're typing some answers for some of the Q&A, but just for everybody's benefit. Um, um, it's a it's a significant course load. So someone saying if you've got a full time work schedule, you're going to be very very busy. There's a lot of course, a lot of it is hands on on campus. So if you're working full time and trying to take the program at the same time, if you're trying to do it within a two year framework, that can be very challenging. It is possible in some cases to take um, these courses in maybe a three year framework where you wouldn't, the course load would not be quite as heavy. And the person to talk to about that would be Jill English, our academic advisor. If you're worried about significant amount of work, get in touch with Jill English and say, Jill, is it possible to do this, say, in three years instead of two? Um, Bachelor of Applied Science is only in horticulture, yes. Yeah, the BS is in horticulture. But I would I would say um, you kind of have to look at the word horticulture, right? So if you look at uh, the word horticulture in a lot of post-secondary educations um, beyond our college in Ontario or across Canada, it encompasses the word landscape and greenhouse with it. So as you go to Olds College to get your Bachelor of Science, you can be a landscape student, a greenhouse student, or a hort student. And the way yep. the two years is laid out, um, say if you're there and, and you are a landscape student and you wanna be specific in your training and landscape, you have the option to do that. So um, just be careful with how the language is. We, we like to specify it in Niagara College between horticulture, landscape and greenhouse, but horticulture kind of puts a break umbrella over all three of us. There's a question about career opportunities in horticulture. Depending, it's, it could be a nursery production. It can be uh, public. There's a huge need right now in public gardens in both Canada and the United States. So it could be in public gardening. It can be in organic growing, whether you're growing uh, vegetables or tree fruits. Urban vegetable and tree fruit growing is also now a huge topic, including growing um, vegetables on rooftops. Wide, wide variety of opportunities. You could spend your whole career in turf. Could be a lawn care business. You could transition from our course into a greenhouse and manage a be a um, greenskeeper, manage a um, golf course as well, golf course potential. The sky's the limit. Sometimes what I suggest is look out in the horticulture industry, look at what career interests you, do some research on the industry before you come to our program, get a sense of what interests you and then see how our program can prepare you for that. Lots of opportunities. So one, one thing to speak to that too, Wayne, is if, um, if you're looking for a place to go to kind of research that, um, if you were to search up Landscape Ontario, yeah. uh, and right in Landscape Ontario, you'll be able to find a job board, um, and there will be probably hundreds of jobs posted there um, across the landscape and horticulture industry. So you can kind of take a look at what they're looking for, what the description is and the variety of that. Um, and then another website to go to would be to search um, American Public Gardens. And if you kind of search that, then again, you'll find a job board within that um, association as well. So really good avenues. Especially we, that land we, we, Ontario website is good. Sorry, we forgot to mention, someone mentioned in the Q&A, if you complete the two-year program for any three, you can come back for one year and get 
pick up a second. That's so let's say you did Hort, two year Hort, you can come back and with one year you can pick up Greenhouse. Or if you do two years landscape, you can come back and do Hort, it, it, all three. So we should have mentioned that. Thanks for reminding us. Uh, yeah, it's good because then it, it, very uh, intelligent anonymous attendee. Yeah, yes. in three years, you can have two diplomas. Okay. I don't see any more questions. Oh, all right. My screen hasn't scrolled. And then one thing I would mention is that um, because the first year is a common year, you do have the flexibility after you complete your first year to say, I, oh, I thought I, I wanted to kind of be in horticulture and now I want to switch to greenhouse. Um, you do have the option to, to switch after your first year. Um, the one thing I would say is just don't wait until September of second year to do that. As soon as you know that you want to switch into a, a different program than what you actually signed up for, um, start that process. Also, Derek's asked, answering a question from Hannah. Um, although we try and to keep the groups very small when we're working, um, outside we try to keep the small groups so there's lots of individualized learning. So although we may take in over 100 students in September, let's say, the actual class time is in smaller groups because that's the most effective teaching and learning environment. Yeah, the classes are broken up into sections, right? So you're not all sitting there. Um, there may be a lesson at one time in some courses where you're all in one room, but then you have labs where you actually break out into smaller groups at different schedules times. Uh, what courses do I apply to end up in greenhouse? There, I don't. I don't think there's any specific courses uh, for any of these programs. There's really just. For greenhouse, chemistry is recommended, but it's not required. So uh, there's there's not a lot of requirements in that regard. I think that may be all the questions. So no. thank you everyone for attending. And please keep in mind, if you have any other questions that come to your mind later in the day or later in the week, feel free to email any of us in the horticulture program, landscape program, greenhouse program. Our contact information is all available to you online. We'll be happy to answer additional questions. And come the winter, when maybe some of the COVID restrictions calm down a little bit, we're happy to give personal tours. Very happy to give personal tours as well once the um, COVID restrictions have been lifted. Uh, Nicholas asked, does the Greenhouse program cover business planning and facility design? Yes. Uh, is it like a full-on business diploma? No. Is it an engineering program? No. But yes, we talk, we talk a lot about um, the business side of it. We get into the details of uh, building, calculating heat requirements, uh, irrigation requirements, that kind of stuff. So yeah, I think so. But again, it's not an engineering program and it's not a full-on business program. So just be aware, right? If you really want to start your own business, I would recommend you take, say, if you want to do a greenhouse business, take the program. You'll love it. Go work for someone and then maybe come back and do a one-year uh, business program at the college uh, to learn sort of the solid, a solid background in, in just how to run a business, learning how to do things like books and reconcile HST and all the WSIV rules. We can't, we don't have enough time to cover all those nuances. But, you know, definitely going out there and working for someone is still a good idea, uh, you know, before you run off and start your greenhouse business. But I spent a lot of time talking to students about them starting businesses. And, and uh, I have a LinkedIn account. I maintain contact with a lot of students uh, after they graduate and help them through their careers and through starting their businesses as well. So uh, that's one nice thing about, uh, I think we're all like that in our college that, you know, just when you graduate, it's not like you're, oh, you're out of here, you're gone. Uh, we're more than happy to keep the lines of communication open. We like it for selfish reasons. We want to build a network of graduates, right? So if you graduate from our college, you're in the club and we'll, we'll keep in touch with you for, uh, for life if you're willing to put up with us. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Any other comments? 
If not, I think we're ready to wrap it up. Uh, Cheryl Lynn, is there any closing comments you'd like to add? Uh, no, on my end, just to remind everyone that the session is recorded and that it will be available on our website if you wish okay. to um, rewatch the content. And again, you can connect with the recruiter to discuss the program one on one or if you need assistance with the application. But that is it on my end. OK, well, thank you very much, everyone. And I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the um, afternoon. Take care. Okay, see Bye -bye. you, everyone. Take care. Hope to hear from you soon. <laughs>